Okay, so geometry equals your uh, pixel resolution. Uh, you have to deal with polygons uh, a certain way, either with the standard brush or the clay brush. Okay, but the future of sculpting is such that uh, we're really moving towards independence. And so let me really bring this home because it, uh, in all the chat uh, forums and if you're on CG Hub talking or your Zebra Central talking uh, and, uh, you know, just talking about the topology, polygons, things like that. Let me ask you, if you had an infinite amount of polygons, if you could have 20 billion gajillion polygons, would you ever retopologize your model? For those of those who are older, uh, who know this a little bit more, would you ever adjust your topology or worry about what your resolution level is if your computer could handle 20 billion gajillion polygons? What if your game engine, if your uh, Sony or your PS3 or uh, your Xbox, what if your Xbox could have a billion, thousand, million polygons going through it? If it didn't matter at all, and if let's say Maya could handle 20 trillion polygons, would you worry about topology? You wouldn't. Why do we worry about topology? Why do we worry about polygon count and why do we worry about how many of these guys there are? Well, there's a descending order of significance. So the first thing, if since we're in ZBrush, we're concerned about the ZBrush limit. When does the system become difficult to deal with? The other thing is wherever our other application, our output. Okay, what what are we moving into? So let's say we're moving into Maya. What would be the concern in Maya? Well, importing. Can you even import a billion polygons? Absolutely not, right? But let's say if you could import 20, two, 200 billion. Okay, then the next question would be, well, what about animation? Or more specifically, what about rigging? How do you rig a 20 billion polygons? If that was gone, would you? Well, the next thing would be rendering. Can you render 200 billion polygons and have it not take 20 light years? If you didn't have that problem, we wouldn't be talking about topology. So the question that technology has in front of it is one of brute force, which is basically increase the amount of polygons until there's no, until it's basically infinite amount of polygons. Or smart, fast, adaptive, on the fly uh, algorithms. Brute force or work smart, not hard. And what that means is what if you, if Maya was able to reorganize topology by itself? Because really, if you think about it, the fact that you're talking to me or thinking about topology right now means that some system has imposed its limitation on you. You don't want to worry about topology. You want to sculpt. You want to create. But I'm, I'm mentioning this and bringing this up because it's a really important part of understanding how we as sculptors work with polygons. The brute force approach is not going to work. Smart, fast, adaptive, on-the-fly algorithms is going to be the first thing. But they're going to have limitations. And then the next thing, when quantum computing or, or how, whatever the next 
evolution is, that's when brute force is going to become more realistic. So anyways, these guys are going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you know, over however many years or decades, this is not going to be a problem. We're going to have other problems. But we're already kind of there for uh, when we're talking about sculpting and creating characters. And I'll, I'll just mention one point about that that I've seen that's really important, and that's for uh, the people I've seen working in the industry, getting jobs, and on their demo reel, being able to work with low polygon objects is very, very, very important. It's not nearly as important as it was five years ago. What I get a lot of requests from studios for is how do we sculpt like a bicep flexing? You know, let's say a boxer. How are we going to be working with a boxer and sculpt the flex the muscle so that when we're playing that game, the boxing, you know, whatever EA sports game is going on, they want to have it so realistic that you see the bicep twitch, you know, right before he's, you know, that really fast rapid fire bicep twitch, you know, when he's standing there kind of threatening his opponent or, or let's say right before the movement, the muscle gives a little signal, muscle kind of twitches a little. How do you sculpt that twitch in your character? Super realistic. The, the technical problems are less significant now. The anatomy and form is more significant. Correct me if I'm wrong. What do you guys think? What are, what are you seeing as the primary things that you need to be dealing with? As you kind of give me some answers there, I'm going to set up and prep for the next little part. Lars mentions anatomy. Computer limitations, displacement maps, real and fast. Yeah, a lot of people say anatomy is the key. That's really significant. Okay, uh, Steve mentions really uh, glad to be able to use the computer. Hold on one second, guys. I'll be right back. All right, still with me? Good, good, good. Had a power outage. Peter's saying, I'm, all, I'm trying to get in the mindset to sculpt and only. I'm an animator, so need to have clean geo and topology and uh, all that stuff for rigging. So yes. So that's really what I want to talk about next is this idea of how much is enough and really set you up so that you can start to understand everything that they do in Modify Topology, everything that they do with Q Remesher, which is right above it, and uh, really get us ready for the next conversation next week where we really talk about polygon management. How do you really work with your polygons to get the most out of them? What are the tools that are pre-built inside of ZBrush? This week, it's about sculpting. Sculpt a face. Okay, don't get too terribly intense if you can create the body that we're going to create here in a little bit. But really just get in and sculpt. Next week we're going to get more intense with subtools and really explain a lot more of that stuff. How much is enough? Well, if you don't have a plan for it, it's kind of like cash. You know, there's you can never have too much cash, so to speak. You know, when are when you, when are you wealthy enough? How many millions do you need to have before? Well, you know, it's just another million. I, I don't know. I'm looking forward to having that problem. I'm working hard at it, but something tells me it's not going to come around for a while. Uh, but polygons are a lot like that, and I saw this when we were when I was at PixLogic because you know we would. First, we gave uh, everybody got a million polygons. 
and people are like, yay, a million polygons. But then they're like, oh, hey, can you do this? Can you get four million polygons? How about eight million? I just really need only eight. I, I swear, this is the last time I'm going to come and ask you for more polygons. I just need eight million polygons. And then it's starting to be a little bit like, you know, that addict coming to his uh, coming to his brother, going, you know, I just need I just need that last little bit, please. Just, I just tied me over to the end. <laughs> when do I have enough? You'll never have enough. You know, it's like cash. You you never got enough. But you need to know how to work with what you have, <laughs> so that you are comfortable and can handle everything. So it's ju it's just like cash. You're never going to have enough, but if you manage it, you're going to be fine. So that's what we want to make sure that you're aware of, how much is enough. So what are the problems that define this? What are the issues that I really need to be aware of? Uh, edges. This is really important for resolution. How do I really crisply define this edge right here? So we have two choices, you know, there's brute force, which equals more polygons, or there's smart, which equals organization, organized topology. But these guys have a very important uh, uh, difference and a, a very important problem. Okay, so first let me state a general rule. There is an inverse relationship between organization and the amount you need. So if we were to put this on a seesaw, the more organized you are, the less polygons you need. This is a, this is a law. It's a 100% law of nature. It's the law of polygons. The more organized you are, the less you need. But the more organized you are, the harder it is to change. The more locked in your form is, the more painful it is to make adjustments or to cut and paste or to design things. And so there's a couple of rules I want to present to you. These, these are the historic rules of working with topology that uh, you can use to guide you. And um, this is what I've learned watching guys like Neville Page and then uh, also guys uh, working at Gentle Giant um, pulling together production stuff or the things I've seen you know at ILM and things of that nature. So if you are designing then you you want to tend towards less organization. If you're in the design phase avoid organizing your topology because the amount of time you invest in organizing is generally going to be wasted by some of the dynamesh things uh, just the whole process of designing does it and ZBrush assumes that it can take your geometry and do what it wants with it so if you are working in an organized topological manner uh, you're not working in the way ZBrush is assuming you're working. So you're going to be working against ZBrush, which is not going to be a good thing for you. If you are in production, more organization. It's real simple. But this is changing. And the place in which this is going to change and the way and the, the things that are going to change are edge flow. Okay, can I take this model and can I automatically reduce that model down to a thousand polygons and still keep all of its form? If that is ever invented, then thing, this whole game is going to change. Because right now, in order for this model to look like this, it has to be at 1.5 million. If I go down, you know, he doesn't look, looks bad, looks bad, looks okay, but you can really see the edges. And that's at 400,000. 
So how do I get him down to 6,000 and still have the detail? Well, you organize it. So let's take a look at an organized model. 